Today I'm going to be talking to you about my underwear and more clothing items. So if you're into the saucy bits, let's break down what to wear when you go day hiking starting now. This video is to discuss the concepts, the baseline concepts of layering. And with all of that, let's start by base layers. The first important thing is underwear. Now you can obviously hike in whatever you've got, but what I really think that is an overlooked item of hiking and certainly backpacking, when you're gonna be out for long days on the trail, having a good pair of hiking underwear is actually, I think, one of the most important um, investments that you can make when starting off your layering system. So first of all, cotton is a very poor choice of material to wear when you're hiking, when you're moving and sweating, especially when you're into the backcountry, because moisture really tends to stay in the clothes. It doesn't really dry out very well. It doesn't move away from your skin. And when you're talking about your nether regions or your netherlands, um, you know, let's start with keeping that dry and clean. So having a good pair of hiking underwear is really great. I've been using these from Ex Officio um, for like eight years. Like literally this pair has lasted me for so long. I have, I have about 10 pairs of these underwear from Ex Officio. They're still going strong and I still feel very supported and cared for. A similar vein is socks. So again, cotton is just the worst. Feet are one of the first things where injuries will happen in the form of blisters. And if you have cotton socks and your feet are sweaty, that moisture will stay on your tissue, on your skin. It won't have anywhere to go. You will rub your feet raw and you're likely gonna have some blisters. At best, having blisters is a painful annoyance. And at worst, it can be debilitating. You can literally be in so much pain that you really can't hike. So get a good pair of hiking socks. These are like anywhere from like 15 to $30, depending on the socks that you get. But in my mind, absolutely worth getting a good pair of socks. I wanna give a quick shout out and a thank you to Mystery Ranch. They are sponsoring this video and they have been a patron of Backpacking TV for a long time. Mystery Ranch makes amazing backpacks, whether you're looking for a day hiking backpack or a backpacking backpack or a hunting backpack or whatever you're into really, check out mysteryranch.com and they can get you kitted out. Next, this is all next to skin type stuff. So having a good hiking t-shirt. This has been one of my go-to hiking t-shirts. I got it free in a raffle somewhere and it's just a synthetic moisture wicking shirt. And there's nothing particularly special about it other than that when I sweat, the moisture moves away and I feel very comfortable. It's a very light, airy, quick drying shirt to wear. In general, you may hear the mantra, cotton kills. And that is true. I, I do think that cotton is just in general a bad thing to wear on hikes. You do need a little bit of common sense when it comes to applying that rule. If you're just out for a casual day hike where you're only going a couple hours or a couple miles and you're never far from your car, then sure, I think wearing a cotton shirt is fine. But if you are going deeper and farther and more remote and you might have inclement weather, well, that's where it really wearing cotton clothing can become dangerous. It's heavy, it dries slowly, it holds moisture against your skin, and it tends to make you feel colder. If you are in an environment where getting dry is very important for your safety, if you're wearing a bunch of cotton clothes, you're not gonna dry out quickly at all, and you are maybe gonna be in for some trouble. So we got underwear, socks, and t-shirt covered. Let's talk about what you wear on your bottom half trying to think of how to phrase that. Um, but anyway, so hiking pants or shorts, depending on what you want. In general, I am a pants wearing hiker. I just like the protection, even though I often hike in Arizona where it's really hot. Uh, I actually think that even more so, it can be important to wear pants to cover your skin. And that's going to be for multiple reasons. One is for sun exposure. 
it's really important, in, especially in places like Arizona or the desert, to protect yourself from the sun. So it's not just about keeping yourself warm. So although these are important for keeping yourself warm as well, I think hiking pants are just a little bit more capable in a variety of situations and how they're comfortable really in, you know, you set off early in the morning and it's cold, then you have protection from the sun when it's warm, and then the temperature late in the day, it drops down and it's cold and you're fine. That being said, you are more than welcome, of course, to hike in a pair of shorts. I do that all the time as well. The benefit is that shorts are a little bit easier to have an uncomplicated and cheap, you know, resource. These were like $25 hiking shorts. So, you know, you don't have to drop a lot of money. Hiking pants don't have to be complicated either, but on that note, I don't recommend wearing jeans or wearing, you know, cotton sweatpants or things like that. Get yourself a pair of technical hiking pants. So something that will be a little bit more abrasive resistant, again, quick drying, and something that I do really like with a pair of pants like this is they have great pockets, they're more form fitting, and they have great ventilation. Another thing that I think everybody should invest in if they're gonna be doing a lot of hiking is a good long sleeve hiking shirt with a hood. So this is a very lightweight one I have from Outdoor Research. It's one of my favorites. It's been one of my go-tos for a really, really long time. And, you know, I actually wear this most frequently here in Arizona. So it's not for warmth. It's for being able to have my skin covered on my arms all the way down kind of over my wrists and the ability to throw my shirt up, cover my ears, cover the back of my neck, because when the sun is baking down on me, you need to cover yourself. This has like SPF 50 and it's breathable and it's light and it's just one of my favorites. So these are great and I definitely recommend you having one of these, even if you're not hiking in the Southwest or in the desert. On a similar note, I have basically a, a lightly insulated version. Now this is from Cotopaxi and this has become one of my favorites recently. Same concept, I love being able to cover myself from head to toe uh, for that sun protection. Um, cut, throw up the hood when it's, you know, the sun is baking down. I just recently did a trip and it was super hot and this was what I took with me and it provided me that protection from the sun. I was getting baked, not that kind of way. This kind of mid-weight uh, insulating layer is very versatile and I love having these um, to be able to hike in. So these are a little bit more expensive, but they're not crazy. I think this was like $90 or $100 or something like that. So it's not dirt cheap, but uh, very versatile piece of equipment to wear. In our hiking system, we have, this is all about layering. So you have your base layers, then you have your mid layers, then you have an additional insulating layer and that's gonna look like a puffy jacket of some sort. Now, it doesn't have to be a down jacket, but that is my go-to, that is my favorite. I talk about warmth to weight ratios, which be, basically means the amount of warmth for the weight that you have to carry is the best when it comes to down. It is very, very light. It takes up almost no space. It weighs, this thing jacket weighs, I think like six ounces, and yet it's pretty warm. So even if the temperatures are dropping, this will keep me pretty warm. It doesn't have to be down and it doesn't have to be super expensive. You can get Prima Loft or an, a synthetic version of this, you know, for like $120 and they will do the job. So I definitely recommend getting a insulated jacket that has either down or a synthetic like Prima Loft. Add this to your layering system and you will not regret it. Now on the similar note, uh, what happens when it's a little colder? Well, you might need something a little beefier. So this is uh, just the Down Fuego from Cotopaxi. And this is a jacket that I like to wear in the winter. You'll notice something called fill power when it comes to down jackets or things like this. So this one I think has like a 650 fill power down, or maybe it's even better than that, but it refers to the quality of the down involved. It has nothing to do with the actual warmth. So a 600 fill power down 
can be just as warm as a 800 or something really fancy like a 900 fill power down. But you will require more of the 600, the cheaper down to fill that jacket to get a certain warmth out of it. So it'll be heavier, it'll be bulkier, and it'll be, you know, cheaper, but it won't be as performance based. So it won't be as nice. But that being said, that's what that means. In case you're wondering when you're going to buy stuff, the fill power does not refer to warmth, it refers to a quality of the down involved. So this is a great jacket and it's very warm. And one of the things that I like about Cotopaxi is you can get really warm clothes for not a ton of money. So this is a great performing jacket and I think it's like, somewhere in the low 200s, or I'm not really sure what the latest price is on it, but it's an economical, it's a more economical down jacket. Now, the last part of the layering system is hard shells and rain protection, snow protection. This is what's really going to protect you from the elements. These clothes are more about um, insulating yourself from cold. So obviously you will add more of these items in as the temperature drops. However, this next layer, this is my hard shell. This is my rain jacket. It's really important to have a layer that will keep moisture out. So that's what this is about right here. Keeping snow, sleet, rain out. Now the other side of this, it is a moisture barrier. So if you are sweating a lot, probably not going to get through your rain jacket, which is going to mean that all that moisture is going to get into your clothes and stay there. So you really don't want to be doing a lot of aerobic activity, like aggressive hikes, moving a lot, huffing and puffing, breathing hard. If you're wearing, you know, all of these layers together, it's, that's a mistake that people make when they're hiking is being too hot, sweating through their clothes because they're wearing too much and then those clothes are wet, they don't dry well, um, especially in cold or wet conditions, they don't dry well, and then you're kind of stuck. So use these to keep the moisture out, and if you're gonna be needing to hike in them, don't wear a bunch of the other layers. Uh, it's better to be a little bit chillier, a little bit colder, and not wear that, and keep that dry and thrown in your pack than you know, wearing it getting it wet from sweat. Rain pants, um, I generally, it depends. I do hike with rain pants, especially in wet areas, of course. Um, great things to have with you when you're hiking, but I often go hike without it. So it really depends on what I'm doing, the weather related to, and the conditions related to where I'm gonna be going. So I find in general, if you're just going out for day hikes and things like that, and you know, you're not gonna be spending the night, you can get away without having some rain pants. Now, this is a good opportunity to talk about materials used in technical clothing with hiking equipment. Cotton, which is not really recommended, not generally acceptable, unless you're hiking in deserts or really warm, dry environments, then it's kind of not as big of a deal. Polyester, nylon, things like that, they are synthetic materials. So they are, you know, essentially non-naturally occurring materials that make great clothing. And you have also, of course, have natural materials. So things like wool, uh, mostly from sheep's wool, but you might also see alpaca wool or things like that. So look for those types of items. Basically synthetic or wool type materials are going to be great for taking onto hikes, onto backpacking trips, and things like that. So that's what I generally recommend. So what are some mistakes that people make when thinking about layering and preparing for their hike? Well, one is pretty obvious and that's not being prepared. So not having enough clothing or the right types of clothing for the environment that you're going in. If I'm going up into the brutal mountains where there's snow and a lot of wind, then yeah, I need to pretty much take all of this. But a mistake that people make is that they think, oh, I'm gonna go hike here. I'm only gonna be gone for two hours. It's currently sunny out, so I'll be just fine hiking in my t-shirt. And in fact, most people get in trouble in the summertime because they go out with just their hiking t-shirt and their shorts, and then something happens where they extend their time out and they don't have clothes to keep them warm. So it is really important to 
be prepared for those types of scenarios. Another mistake that people do make is not wearing enough. And um, this, it's not about cold, it's actually about the sun. So if I just go out and hike in a tank top, well, those shoulders and arms are going to get roasted. And it's really important that you have the appropriate clothing to protect yourself from the other end of the spectrum, from the heat, from the sun, from that baking UV rays that can cause skin damage, that can cause sunburns. So even when it's really hot, I do hike with more coverage. One more thing that I wanna talk about is where should you spend your money? So this is obviously up for personal preference, but uh, personally, I would say that there are some simple things that you should spend your money on. A good pair of hiking underwear, a great pair of hiking socks. This will protect your feet and be so important. So it's worth spending, you know, $30 on a pair of socks versus a $6 pair of socks. Absolutely worth it. I think that it's great to have some sort of performance mid-layer. That is definitely where I would spend some money. And then the next thing that I'm most fond of is a good down jacket. So I would absolutely spend some good money on a lightweight, high performance insulating down jacket with good warmth to, weight, warmth to weight ratio. I think that you can save money on uh, hiking shorts. I think that you can save money on hiking pants. I don't think that those have to be complicated. I think you can save money on rain jackets. I think that wearing a poncho or something inexpensive or even just windbreaker kind of thing that doesn't cost a lot of money can work really well for you as well. That's it. That's my video on layering. We talked about uh, cotton clothes, synthetic clothes, wool or natural fibers. We talked about your layering system and where is best to spend your money. I hope this video was helpful for you. If you have any questions, please hit me up in the comments below. I do love helping people get out there, be informed. And you know, if you got some specifics, specifics, let me know. I'll try to help you out. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Eric Hansen with Backpacking TV. I'll see you later.